Good afternoon. Here we are in the advertising heart of Hong Kong, Quarry Bay, and we're recording episode seven of 852 Reboot Hong Kong. And I'm here with Chris Kime, who is the co-founder and creative director of Kime Chow. Uh, so let's get started. There we go, Chris. So Hi. tell me, uh, you've been in Hong Kong how long now? Mm, just over 30 years. 30 years. What brought you here? A job offer. A I, job was offer. I was interviewed in London and they brought me out here to see if I'd like it. And I, you know, for a week or so and see if they'd like me. I got here and then I fell in love with it and it's, I've been here ever since. And what does, what does Kaim Chow do? I mean, you're, you know, you've written a book about the advertising industry in Hong Kong. Uh, what does Kaim Chow do? Well, you, I know you come from the copywriting background, but what is your business now? Yeah, we're a creative agency and these days it's more than just advertising. You know, so we're helping brands connect with consumers at all touch points, online, offline, branding, um, some design, you know, uh, everything uh, driven by strategy and ideas. What's it like working in the advertising industry in, in, in a multicultural society like Hong Kong? I mean, obviously, you've got you know, the Chinese culture, the English culture, there's lots of minorities. Uh, but most stuff is, I presume, bilingual. But how do you find running a, you know, a creative business in Hong Kong? Well, I, I think you need to, uh, well, because I've been here so long, I learned how to adapt to working here a long time ago. And so I consider myself part of the Hong Kong landscape now. But you learn to adapt to the market you're in. So wherever you go and work in the world, you're not sort of necessarily pushing your thinking. You've got to observe the way life is and the way people are. And then you've got to design your thinking and your ideas to suit that market. So it's always fascinating. It's always surprising. It's always entertaining. And you learn. You learn a lot. So it's very educational too. And you're, I mean, we're now going through a period of transition here in Hong Kong, right? You know, you've been here 30 years. I've been here 26 years. We see lots of changes over the years through Hong Kong. Um, where do you see Hong Kong going in the future? Because obviously we're becoming part of, you know, economically, uh, we're becoming part of this Greater Bay or um, Pearl River Delta area, as I like to call it. Um, what do you see that playing into our industry? How will that change things? I think that, um, well, first of all, in terms of where Hong Kong is going creatively, I think that, um, it's a mature market here. So obviously everyone's used to sort of advertising and branding. Um, and there's always the younger generations coming up. Uh, when I did the book, that was about the transition I saw then, where it went from the old colonial sort of days where the advertising was more Western influence to finding its own local voice. So I would like to think that continues, that, that Hong Kong local creatives can express themselves uh, through their creativity. And I think that should continue. So anybody who's trying to help young people come through, that should be what we're sort of pushing. In terms of the Greater Bay Area, I think um, that's affected by a couple of things. One is which businesses are, are actually engaged doing business over there. There's a lot of people from Hong Kong that are actively involved in sort of going into the Greater Bay Area. I think it's for Hong Kong to decide what it wants to be in yeah. terms of the role it will play in the future. And you're saying your, your book came out in when? When was the...? It's about five years ago now. Five years ago. So you were focusing on, on the going local. What does, I mean, local in Hong Kong, what does that mean to you? How do, how do, you, how um, do you parlay that into the advertising industry? I, th I think that when I, my observation was that when I was first working here, a lot of the local advertising was still very kind of influenced by Western ideas or Western thinking because a lot of the people in top jobs were, you know, expats. Mm. And a young generation came up and they found their own voice. And not only that, they found themselves, particularly after 97, free to express themselves through their local culture and their local ways. And I think that's what I would consider. And that's the same as any city in the world. Mm. You know, what's New York style versus LA style? And I think that's very healthy um, because then you touch local hearts and minds. Um, so it's finding your voice your local voice. And um, that's where I think it got really creative at a time. I don't think it is today. It's not creative today. I don't think, I don't think creativity is really thriving here now. But really, that, that's interesting is, I mean, we're seeing a lot of creativity coming off the back of these protests in all kinds of ways, right? Uh, artistic creativity, design, ideas, the way that social media is used. Do you, do you not see this kind of as a boost to 
to the way that people express themselves? No, in, because in a... that, that's a different topic. I'm talking about brands. I'm talking yeah. about what we do every day in our business. Yeah. And I think that Kong, Hong Kong had a very peak creative period, particularly sort of around and after 97, mm. when some of the local work was the best work ever. Mm. Um, but today, I think advertising has become very formula. Yeah. You know, what we see around us every day, if you use outdoor as a benchmark, it's just the same old thing. And although there's good creativity in social media and in some niche kind of areas, particularly online, you get online films, whatever, generally as a whole, I think it's pretty boring. And that's not just, I would say, Hong Kong. I mean, you go to lots of other cities and you're going to say the same thing. So the challenge is to find ways to be creative and find opportunities to be creative. And for that, you've got to have clients that want it. They want you to do something different. And do you think, I mean, you know, that the whole industry is moving a lot towards Originally it was digital and then it was data. Do you think kind of data and that performance part is drowning out the creative side or is it enhancing it or is it just we're going through a learning phase of how to use all of this information to create better advertising? Mm -hmm. well, I think there's a bit too much obsession with technology sort of leading creativity and, and replacing creativity. And I don't think that should be the case. I think data is very interesting. Uh, fascinating to me that it can help drive creativity and, um, and also um, sort of inspire your targeting so that the messages you're delivering are far more kind of like um, defined to the people that you need to reach. So I think that, you know, it's great. I think data should be informing creativity in the way that research used to, um, but it's not going to replace it. You know, creativity is still the key thing to me. Very nice. So we've got time left for two plugs, two promotions. Let's start with the first one. What do you want to plug? I would like to plug Nesbit Centre, which is an organisation helping disadvantaged people get into the workforce. So they, they have their challenges in terms of um, you know, their education levels. And, in, uh, and what they do is they sort of uh, help them find their skills, uh, uh, groom them in this sort of everyday skills and help them find a place. And so if you go to Cafe 8 in Central, all the staff there are groomed by uh, Nesbit Centre. And it's a great example of the work that they do. Nice. And how would you find, find Nesbit Centre? Is there a domain name? You or? can find them, Nesbit Centre Online. It's a Hong Kong okay. organisation. And I think they do great work. Excellent. And the second plug? I would like to plug Shuka, which is a new restaurant by our client Elite Concepts. It's modern Sichuan uh, food. And K Bar, which has got a stunning view overlooking the harbour. And it's in K11 Museum. Oh, Go there, there and go. try it. What is modern food? Modern well, Sichuanese I mean, they have food. another restaurant called Dengji, which is yeah. really traditional home yeah. style yeah. Sichuan cooking. And it's more like nouveau Sichuan, okay. if you very can good. sort of get your head around that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.